Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be kicking off this new series where I'm gonna be reviewing your resumes and your LinkedIn's. I'm super excited about it. I get a ton of requests and for this series, I'm gonna make sure I review a wide variety and a diverse set of resumes just so it's useful to as many people as possible, which uh, like I said, I'm pretty excited about. Um, if you are interested in having your resume reviewed and kind of having kind of showcase your resume on my channel, there's a form in the description where you could kind of put your details, what you're looking for, and also attach your resume so I could take a look and kind of use it for a future video. Um, with that, definitely don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'm gonna be posting a lot more frequently with resume content, project reviews, etc. So make sure you also click the notification button so that you are aware of any um, new content that I'm putting out. Um, I guess with that, let's kind of hop into the resume. Cool, so as I mentioned, this person wanted to be anonymous. So as you can see, a lot of kind of the positions and education is black, blacked out, which I think is okay. I think we really wanna focus on the content and the way this is structured. So I'm really happy analyzing it the way it is right now. Uh, let's go from the top down. So first, the education. So we see as MS in public pol policy management. Now for the data field that is slightly unorthodox. So um, I like that he put his GPA. I like that he said it's a data analytics, analytics track. Uh, what I actually really love is the fact that he added all of his coursework here. Because it is a slightly unorthodox um, an orthodox background, I think it's good to highlight that your um, coursework and whatever you learned throughout this graduate degree was very data centric and this shows that immediately. I think it's really critical when you're, um, uh, if you're in a similar position. Kind of dropping down into the skills, I think I always like a skill section. I think it's really useful. I think it's good to highlight what you're comfortable using. Um, obvious note, don't put anything you're not comfortable using. I think that's just a surefire way for you to get called out in an interview and then it's just not gonna look good. Um, one thing I will say, because right now we are looking at the entire resume and I do see that the skills section takes up about a fifth or maybe even more of that of the entire page. Um, that can be okay, but let's, as we go through, we'll see if we're kind of missing details elsewhere and kind of taking up too much space here. Um, like I said, the machine learning skills, I think is all great. Highlights that he's comfortable with supervised um, learning, ensemble learning, unsupervised, really good. These are all like um, kind of great foundational models that he seems to be very comfortable with. And I would be happy if kind of a candidate was comfortable with all of these, um, these models and approaches. Statistical model modeling and toolkit, I think this is really great because I think more and more new graduates aren't that comfortable with their stats. So I think it's good that he's highlighting that he is uh, because it is critical when you're kind of working at, as a data scientist. Um, toolkit, I think is really good. Um, Jupyter Notebook, I think it's, for me, I really like if a candidate shows that he's comfortable with certain um, coding environments or comfortable with the AWS suite. I think that's really useful. Um, not a make or break, but if you highlight that, that's definitely a plus that um, kind of could, could potentially put you over the edge. I just missed this, but I love that he added Spark and PySpark here. This is very understated in data science education and is super useful because obviously everything we're working on is very big data centric. So um, the fact that he is familiar with big data um, programming, which is really useful. I think it's, yeah, I would really like to see that. Moving past the skills, let's hop into the work experience. So first is the data science intern. Um, I should have mentioned that this is someone looking for an entry level position. So I'm plan I expect to see pro a lot of projects and research work potentially at school and also internships. So this kind of checks with what I'd expect from an entry level, um, entry level candidate. Okay, so his data science internship. Let's just look at this first sentence. Built machine learning models that predicted corpse members early exit, reducing dropout rate by up to 34%. Um, let's stay on this point for a little bit and let's talk about the pros. One, it's good that 
he highlighted what the problem statement was um, and he highlighted that this is the overall impact, which I think is great, right? I think you really want to drive home like what the significance of that model was, right? So this is good to see. But I do have a lot of problems with it. I think, this, I think there probably is more cons and pros in this section, but it's easily fixable. Um, when you say built machine learning models, for me, that's just way too vague. Like I don't need, I don't want to have to probe, like what did you actually use? Like was, um, I'm assuming it's a classification model because he's predicting probably the likelihood of a corpse member exiting, but I don't think you should ever have a hiring manager or recruiter have to assume what you did, right? So um, make that very explicit. So if I were to rewrite this whole first section, it would be something along the lines of, this is completely fake, but uh, built a random bars classification model that predicted the corp members early exit. Um, precision recall was 0.7 and 0.75, which is uh, 0.2 greater than the baseline. And this reduced the dropout rate by 34%. Um, can you see what I did there? I think I touched upon what the model was, um, what were the actual valuation metrics? Cause that's also missing here. I don't know, like dropout rate, sure. That's something that he reduced, but how did you get to that? What did you use? Like, what metric did you use to optimize this model? That's really important. Um, so really simple fixes, but that's probably kind of my biggest feedback for a sentence. Um, this goes into the data size, 30 K records, 326 predictors. Um, I think this is great. Exactly. Highlights the size of the data set. The fact that there's a lot of feature engineering being done, um, resampling methods use PCA for dimensionality reduction. This is really great. I think this kind of does what I wanted this first sentence to do. I really want him to highlight what specific tools and um, techniques he used. Um, lastly, I think this is also fantastic. The fact that he's like coming full circle. Now he's highlighting like, this is how I'm taking this model and this approach and showcasing it, making it leverageable from, uh, from stakeholders, right? Um, so it's good. I mean, he highlights that he's good at Tableau or not good. He's um, proficient or is able to build Tableau model or dashboards. Um, so that's really good. Um, just a few, I think the only thing here would be just to update this first sentence. Other than that, everything looks pretty good. Going into the next one, right? So this is him being a research assistant. And what he did was he developed a difference in difference model for an NSF funded research project for COVID-19 pandemic and found an average reduction of 20% part one crime and 14% jail population. I gotta say, I feel like I don't have any feedback or any like, areas of criticism for this first sentence, which is pretty awesome. I think he highlights which model he use. Also, this is not a model you see often, right? This is very like, very statistically heavy um, approach that you don't, like I said, don't see it don't see used that often, but I can't talk. Um, so it's good that he highlights that he's obviously very comfortable with using such a model. It's NSF funded, so it kind of shows the importance of this project. Um, problem statement, what he's looking to analyze, and then the overall results. I think, like I said, this is such a concise sentence that gives you all the information you need. I think this is fantastic. Um, Going into the next two, so scraping data using Python, using multiple websites. This is great. Highlights that he used comfortable scraping data using Python. Awesome. Um, what he was looking to get. Extracted COVID deaths and hospitalization rates using number of APIs. This is honestly, I don't think I would touch this at all. First sentence highlights the model, the objective, the results. The second two highlights the coding and frameworks he's comfortable with. The fact that he's comfortable with APIs, I think this is, like I said, I don't think I would change much. I think it's also written really well. I have huge kudos um, for um, this candidate and kind of him putting this together. Let's see, now let's hop into the projects, right? So I think we got through the work experiences. I think it's just a couple things. I think this is this line's the only thing I'd really want updated. After that, I think things are looking pretty good for the work experience, which is pretty impressive. Um, yeah, huge kudos to the guy. Now, hopping into the projects, a recommendation system for donors. Very cool. Um, built a collaborative and content-based recommendation systems. Pause. I think it's good. He highlights the fact that there are two types of recommendation systems. Um, a quick aside, I feel like I interviewed a candidate and he highlighted his, um, his knowledge of 
uh, recommendation systems and when asked which type he kind of froze and immediately did not um, know how to go further. So um, I think this is good. This guy understands kind of some nuances in kind of the recommendation kind of world. So let's see, what is he doing here? He's recommending educational projects to donors at donorschoose.org. Very cool. Um, it's, he says he could generate up to 109K in additional donations per marketing campaign. Um, I have some issues so far, but let's look through the rest and see if it comes up elsewhere. Uh, perform data wrangling. Okay, it's good. Highlights the scale of the data that was used. Um, built ensemble machine learning classifier to predict projects funding success. Past baseline model by 36%. Um, I think you probably kind of see where I'm going, in like, where I'm going to go in terms of my criticism. I think you really didn't highlight what evaluation metrics were used, right? I think, sure, it could generate up to 109K, but like, is that completely speculative? I think I have some issues with this, maybe some like uh, hiring managers that you wouldn't, but I think it's just a high, highly speculative. I would like to see something more concrete in terms of um, the evaluation metrics used. How do we, like, was it tested that we could potentially um, generate this many additional donations, right? What was, kind of the performance of the model itself. I think none of that is here, which I I think is really missing. And in this last kind of row, this is very similar to, to the data science internship of feedback there. I think just highlighting it's unsolved with machine learning classifiers is just too vague. I think sure it shows that you are from, uh, comfortable with uh, ensembling techniques, but I like to see what machine learning classifiers um, you used, right? You surpassed a baseline model by 36%. Is that 36% like what evaluation metric, right? I think all of that should be, should be included. Um, I really feel like that's missing. Um, now the loan default prediction. So develop classification algorithms. So it's funny how this, it's like a common theme. The first, <laughs> the first kind of project is very vague in the methodology used, whereas the second one gives exactly the amount of detail you want. Um, you develop the classification algorithm, um, use random bars, which is regression, LDA, and to predict a borrower's likelihood to default, default to a loan, um, outperforming industry standard by 40%. This is almost there, like 90%. I think you just want to highlight um, your performance metrics. So he classification algorithms, he's outputting a likelihood, but what is your precision, recall, F1, F2 score? What metric did you use to, op uh, to optimize this model? That I think is super important and is missing here. Um, connected data cleaning, anomaly detection, dimensionality reduction on the data frame with 2.2 million records. I think this is great, highlights the scale. Um, last one, I think, I am assuming it's a competition that he was working in. Um, Assess Mount Rainier National Park's data to find opportunities, park navigation, okay. Recommend, you provide some recommendation. So it seems like this is a consulting type of project. Um, and the fact that he came first place, I think just shows like, okay, there's like a level of skill here um, and intellect here in him and his team that um, did really well. Thinking to grow. Um, I think I, I'm fine with the way it is right here. Maybe putting together future plans, like did they actually imp implement his solution, right? That would be cool to see if you have that type of information. Um, that I think is it. Let's kind of just wrap up. And there's a couple other things I think I wanna mention after going through everything end to end. Um, one, I like that he highlights exactly what pro pro programming language is used for each of these projects. I think that's great. Um, if I were to make some overall updates, I think there isn't any kind of discussion of the teams that he worked in. I think it's also really important when you're um, trying to market yourself. Like, do you have experience working in large teams? Like, have you worked with marketing or product managers or data engineers, et cetera, right? I think um, highlighting that is really good when you're putting together um, your resumes. And I feel like that's missing all throughout this resume. So across the board, that's some feedback I would give. Um, 
what I would also do, like I mentioned, is add all the modeling details. If that means he has to reduce the size of the skill section, that's okay. But I prefer to see that in the details of the experience versus in just a skill section where you're just like labeling a bunch of stuff. Um, maybe I'm cynical or jaded, but I have seen time and time again, people put so many, um, so many different algorithms, etc., and really aren't that comfortable with it, right? So I always take this section with a grain of salt and prefer to see it like, applied in the work experience section. Um, all like, like I said, overall, this is a really good resume. There's only a few things. I think it's like not that significant amount of work to get this into a place where I think you should be sending this out to uh, employers. So overall, I think that's about it. I hope um, I'm going to send all these notes to him. Hopefully he takes his feedback and is able to um, use his, re his resume to land that first job. So that's it for my first resume critique. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think this honestly was actually a lot more fun than I expected. Um, I do want to keep doing more of these. I want to reiterate there's a form in the description if you are interested in um, having me review your resume. Also, LinkedIn and resumes are almost interchangeable at this point. So I am totally comfortable reviewing your LinkedIn. I know that's a massive tool. So if you would like me to review your LinkedIn, provide some feedback, I'm totally open to doing that too. Again, check out the form in the description and um, send me your details and let me know what you thought of this video also, right? This is the first time I'm doing this, first time I'm kind of sharing my resume critiquing process. So let me know if you found this valuable. Did you think I went into enough detail? Did you think I was fair in my criticism? Did you feel like whatever I mentioned is applicable to your projects? Let me know, drop some comments. And then, like, like I said, your feedback's absolutely invaluable. Um, with that, definitely like, subscribe if you did like this video and I'll see you in the next, uh, in the next one. Bye.